So, you're getting serious about nutrition and you wanna get some protein, but should you get casein or whey? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin and today we're gonna to talk all about the differences between whey and casein protein. I'll tell you where they come from, how they behave in your body, and how that has an effect on muscle growth. As always, I wanna point out that I'm not recommending any particular protein supplements. What I'm gonna do is talk about the difference between two of the most popular protein types on the market and how they can help you build more muscle. Let's get started. So, for anyone who doesn't know yet, both casein and whey come from the exact same source. Milk. Milk is actually made up of two major types of protein. About 80% of that is a protein called casein, which doesn't dissolve very well in water, as you'll probably have noticed whenever you've mixed up a casein shake. And the remaining 20% is made up of whey proteins, which dissolve really well in water. To help you understand how they're made, when we make cheese from milk, which I believe there are a lot of people who don't actually know where cheese comes from. Anyway, the casein proteins coagulate together and form solid curds and the remaining liquid drains off and is called whey. The curds are then processed a little more by pressing, salting, aging, depending on the variety of cheese. For years, the whey was considered a waste product and dairies actually had to pay to get rid of it until someone realized that they were wasting huge profits in the form of whey protein. Now, whey and casein are part of a multi-million dollar protein industry. I mentioned this just so you're aware that casein and whey are perfectly natural products derived from whole foods because some people like to look down on protein powders like they're completely artificial. They're not, and there's nothing inherently wrong with peeing artificial either. You'll probably have seen different types of whey and casein, so it's worth mentioning what they are. Whey concentrate is the most basic form of whey and is produced by filtering the whey protein. It's got a slightly lower percentage of protein, but that's only because it's a little higher in fat and carbs. Those carbs will mostly be lactose. So if you're lactose intolerant, you might want to be cautious with whey concentrate. Whey isolate is further processed and purified to remove the fat and carbs from the whey concentrate. It's a little higher in protein percentage, lower in fat and carbs, and also calories. People who are lactose intolerant often find that they have no problem with whey isolate because the lactose has been removed but it still can contain a little. Finally, there's hydrolyzed whey, which has been partially broken down or hydrolyzed with enzymes, which makes it easier and quicker to absorb. As for casein, the most common form is micellar casein, which is made by membrane filtration of skim milk, which is then spray dried. If you've used it before, you'll have noticed that it doesn't dissolve as well as whey in a shake and tends to clump together. There's also hydrolyzed casein, which is partially broken down with enzyme, just like hydrolyzed whey. This process actually helps to speed up the digestion and absorption of casein by almost 30%. Finally, you may also find something called milk protein isolate or milk protein concentrate. These are made by heating skim milk and concentrating both the whey proteins and caseins using special membranes. This means milk protein concentrates contain a mix of about 82% casein and 18% whey proteins. So long story short, both of these proteins come from milk. So they're both the same, right? Not quite. Now, casein and whey are both excellent quality proteins. And by that, I mean that they are both really high in all essential amino acids, which we need to help build new muscle tissue. They're both high in branch chain amino acids, especially leucine, which is the specific branch chain amino acid, which stimulates muscle protein synthesis, which leads to muscle growth. That said, whey is higher in EAAs, BCAAs, and specifically leucine than casein. Don't get me wrong, casein is still an incredible quality protein. It's just in this case, whey has the advantage. The big difference between the two is their speed of digestion. One of whey's most famous properties is that it is very quickly digested and absorbed. That means if you take a whey shake, you'll get a very large increase in amino acids in the blood. However, after that, your blood amino acids drop back to normal pretty quickly. On the other hand, casein is famous for being a very slow digesting protein. This is because when casein hits the acid in your stomach, it coagulates into lumps, kind of like the curds that form when making cheese, which take much longer to digest. This means that after drinking a casein shake, you don't get as big an increase in amino acids in the blood as you would get with whey. But that slow digestion means that casein can keep your blood amino acid levels elevated for considerably longer up to seven hours or more, depending on the amount that you take. The fact that whey can raise blood amino acid levels so quickly, and in particular, the fact that it raises leucine so quickly, means that whey is very good at stimulating muscle protein synthesis and can increase MPS about twice as much as a similar amount of casein. And this seems to translate to greater gains in muscle size too. In a study by Cribidol, 
two groups of recreational bodybuilders supplemented their diet with either whey or casein for 10 weeks. And the whey group had significantly greater increases in muscle hypertrophy. So, end of story, right? Whey is better, full stop. Well, there might be some situations where casein has an advantage, specifically because it digests so slow. Remember when I mentioned that casein can keep blood amino acid levels elevated for seven hours or more? While that might not be the best for stimulating muscle protein synthesis, it actually does a really good job of preventing muscle protein breakdown. Muscle protein breakdown is the opposite process of muscle protein synthesis, and having a greater net balance of MPS leads to muscle growth over time. In reality, you can achieve that positive net MPS in two ways by increasing muscle protein synthesis or reducing muscle protein breakdown. The good thing with eating a meal is that it temporarily reduces MPB and increases MPS at the same time, at least for a few hours. But what if you haven't eaten for a long time? Like when you sleep, that's where casein comes in. Because casein raises blood levels of amino acids for so long due to its slow digestion, it also reduces muscle protein breakdown for an extended period too. This is why pre-bed protein doses of casein are a popular strategy for people trying to maximize muscle growth. Let me explain how it works. We already know that exercise is the most important factor for increasing MPS and muscle growth, and that a session of resistance exercise can stimulate MPS for 24 hours or more. To take advantage of this, bodybuilders often eat protein-heavy meals quite regularly during the day to further stimulate MPS and to reduce muscle protein breakdown. Sleeping is the longest time most of us go without food, so taking a slow digesting protein like casein before bed may be a really good idea to take advantage of that time when MPS would otherwise be really low. 30 to 40 grams of casein just before bed should be a decent amount to promote net MPS while you sleep. So there you have it, the similarities and differences of casein and whey protein. Hopefully you can see that both can be really beneficial if maximizing muscle growth is your goal. I should also mention that there is some evidence to suggest that mixing whey and casein in a one-to-one -one ratio might also be beneficial for muscle growth, as you get the quick-acting MPS-promoting spike in leucine from whey, along with the extended release of essential amino acids needed for muscle growth from casein. It's kind of like getting the best of both worlds. So did this answer your whey and casein questions? As always, if you have any more, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.